Cool. All right, guys. Uh, anybody know Easy Drummer? Cool, you know? Great. So what this is is the next generation of Easy Drummer. Um, this is Superior 2.0 that we're showing. Uh, I got involved with these guys about three and a half years ago. I'm a producer, and I'm, I mix, and I'm a musician, and I was mixing a project for little Steven Van Zandt, a live thing that he had done in Germany in 1983. And he had made his drummer play Simmons drums, and now they were going to re-release this in 2006. And he's like, there's no way this is going out with Simmons drums on it. So he wanted me to totally replace the drums, and I tried to do it with Sound Replacer at first, and it sounded almost as bad. So I got their, their version one of DFH. It was DFH at that point, the library, Superior. And replaced all the drums with it. It went great. It took some time to do it, but it went fantastic. But my one issue with it was, this was a rock band. This is when Little Steven had his four-piece band. And so you want room mics, and that's part of what makes rock drums sound like rock drums. So I was working at the Hit Factory at the time in New York. And they announced that they were going to close it down. So th I contacted these guys and told them, hey, we got to do a drum library in Studio One at Hit Factory, which is a large orchestral tracking room. Beautiful sounding room. And so I contacted these guys. They came over. And I then contacted my buddy Neil Dorsman. He's an engineer that did Sting and Dire Straits and uh, Bruce Springsteen and worked at a power station with Claremont in all those years. And, and Neil Dorsman brought in Near Z, who's one of the top session guys in the, in the country, if not the world. And uh, Near has been vital to this as well. It's, the engineering is obviously very, very important to the sonic integrity. But then having a drummer that knows how to tune his drums and knows how to hit them well and knows how to bring tone out of a drum is crucial, really, to have proper samples. So, and Near is also a phenomenal technician, which is required for the detail of the sampling of all the layers, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But anyway, so we did Hit Factory, and that went great. So it's like, well, let's keep going. So we went across the street to Avatar Studios, which was Power Station. And that has one of the coolest sounding drum rooms on the planet. And that went great. So it's like, well, let's keep going. It's, who knows? And they closed Hit Factory down. So, And there were rumors that they were going to close a studio called Allaire Studios down, which is upstate New York, which is a large mansion that was turned into a, a professional studio about 10 years ago. Destination Studio, where Steely Dan and uh, David Bowie and a lot of people have recorded there. It has this amazing room. They call it the Grand Hall for the main tracking room. And so what we wanted to do was have a room that we could place a lot of different room mics in in different positions and get a lot of dimension to the drums. So what you're hearing right now is the Allaire Library that Nier is playing. And actually, if we go to the mixer, You'll see that guys that have easy drum will notice that the mixer is, is much more elaborate. Um, there's now uh, five different effects that come with the mixer. There's a large uh, aux section where you can mold drums out to, to different auxes and uh, have multiple effects on the drums. And you can do a lot of pre-filtering and EQing and compressing and even use a transient designer before you even take it into your host. So it gives you a lot of options and we'll get into some of those details in a minute too. But if you'll notice on the, the far right of the, the, the drum part of the mixer, we have three sets of stereo room mics. Um, so he's now grouped all those mics and brought them up together. But if you we're going to listen to the first set, which we had a pair of coals that we had about 10 feet off of the drums um, that we ran through in 1176. And that's that nice British vintage sound that you get through coals. Yeah, give us some of the toms. And you'll never get that. Yeah, you'll never get that through anything that's modeled. I mean, that's those mics, the drums in that room in that position. Um, the second set of room uh, mics that we have is actually a single mic. It's a C24 that was about 15 feet off of the drum kit. Add a little deeper into the room to add that dimension. So again, just you can hear the room is getting larger now. And then, then we took it. And now that is a pair of 67s that we put as high up as we could on the boom mic stands and put them as far back in the room as possible 
to get just the most over-the-top big room drum sound you could possibly imagine. So, Derek, could you play this pretty hard for a minute so he can really hear it? So it's really like a great chamber as well. And the toms are fantastic in it. Yeah, but you don't need reverb. Yeah, yeah, you don't need reverb with this. I mean, yeah, oh, it doesn't sound, never sound the same because, I mean, that's part of what you go to a great studio for is the room sound as well, and the, the, obviously the equipment, and hopefully you have a good engineer, and that's one of the things that we were out to accomplish, which I believe that we did on this. But then we figured, let's keep going, and so I also like to add distortion on drums, especially when I'm doing a modern rock band, um, to give it a little more apparent level in the mix, make it sound a bit more aggressive, and so sometimes when I'm working in Pro Tools, and I'm, if I'm mixing completely in the box, if you use a Sans Amp plug-in or some of the other modeled uh, distortion pedals or whatever, even if you're using delay compensation, it'll still impart some, some phase issues. You bring it up and it's like, it's almost there, but you can't really adjust it, it's however they model it. So we set up a bullet mic about down here off the kit. Um, and you know, the bullet mic that harmonica players use and we ran it through a boogie amplifier. And so if, if Matias solos that, now it's also, you can either blend it in or use it on its own, you know? And it's kind of instant loops. And now we have five different effects, or six different effects, actually. The five different that come with, uh, with it. This is the high and low pass. We have a transient designer that was modeled after the SPL one. So guys that mix know how valuable this is, kind of secret weapon of, of guys that mix. Do you really taper your transients with it? You can take it more over the top with a compressor. If, if Nears hands don't give out of them. <laughs> and then there's a gate in there as well. If you wanted to gate it, you can do it. So now, if we, if we take that out of solo, he plays kind of a rock thing and not a jazz. And here the phase is still really nice in that. So you're adding that distortion, but it's... And it adds that extra little aggression to it without screwing up the phase of the rest of your drums. So, also we took a lot of care in, in miking the snare drum. And we, when, what we wanted to do, and when I'm mixing and, or producing a record, I like to have as many options as possible when we record the drums, because depending upon if you're doing a ballad or a really high a, a tempo tune or whatever it is, you want to have different elements that you may use in that particular song. So Neil did the, the traditional top and bottom snare mic, but then he also added a third mic for the side stick. So when, when you go to the side stick, you're not going to have this giant jump and level that it, the side stick would be 10 dB quieter than the snare drum. So Nier's kind of done a, a cool thing that he's put the side stick on an additional pad so he can still utilize all the capabilities of the snare drum from the just rim shots in the center and all. So you, you hear that the, there's a lot of presence to that side stick. You hear that the difference between is not too great. But, right, there's a nice balance between the two of those. The thing is, Neil Dorsen, who's a fanatical, crazy man engineer, which is what you want in an engineer, spent about an hour getting the phase right in these three microphones, but he really nailed it. The thing that we found with this is that using this third microphone as part of the picture in the snare, if you want to, is fantastic. It adds another dimension to it. So, Matthias, if you pull that, this, this, the rims mic out. Yeah, so give us a snare. I mean, that sounds great. That's, I'd be more than happy just to have that. 